Some of the ships in Star Citizen have a truly iconic look about them, and that's certainly true of the Aegis Gladius. A sleek and slender fighter is expected to be one of the feature stars of the Squadron 42 campaign and is often the testbed for game technology. But does that fame translate into a successful ship in the PU? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Aegis Gladius, which is described on the Star Citizen website as a light fighter. If you've seen other reviews on this channel, then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. As always, we'll start the tour of the Gladius from the outside. There's not too much to see, as this is just a fighter sized ship, but a nice touch is these little buttons that go all the way down the ship that open access to the various components. On the right or starboard side at the front of the fighter is a small weapons rack. And in the middle of the ship is access to the ship's storage. To get aboard, you'll need to climb up into the cockpit by deploying a ladder on the front left or port side. Notable here is a very nice animation both when you get in and also when you start up the ship. The Gladius comes armed with three fixed size 3 weapons. By default, that's a Mantis Ballistic Gatling on the nose and two Panther Repeaters below the wings. It's also armed with four size 3 missile launchers, which in the default configuration give two size 3 and four size 2 missiles. All of that is fairly similar to other light fighters, and more than enough firepower to deal with most fighter sized targets. Defensively, the Gladius carries two size 1 shield generators. That compares favourably to the Arrow, for example, or some of the other very small fighters, which perhaps only carry a single generator. Put all of that together, and unsurprisingly, you've got a fairly quick, fairly powerful, well balanced fighter. Against fighter sized targets, the Gladius holds its own, and with a 5 minute respawn timer, if you do push beyond the capabilities of a ship, you don't have to wait too long to try again. Perhaps predictably, visibility out of the Gladius feels like what you might expect out of a modern fighter jet. The multifunction displays protrude slightly at the base of natural eyeline, but that's probably necessary to keep the content visible. And the detonation cord on the canopy sits at the top of the field of view but doesn't really get in the way. Otherwise, the Gladius offers great visibility above and to the sides. And it's fast. In a straight line, the top speed is 1236 meters per second, which is one of the quickest fighters. But crucially, the suggested combat maneuvering speed of 208 meters per second is also very quick, and the Gladius handles naturally at those sort of speeds. Perhaps it's no surprise given the sleek and slender aerodynamic profile, but it also makes the Gladius a fairly easy choice to fly for would be combat pilots. The stock quantum drive is the military spec beacon drive, which is very fast, albeit means that the Gladius has somewhat limited range compared to with other drives. That might be okay if you're just flying around Crusader clearing bounties, but might be something to consider if you need to make a longer trip.
It's very cheap to operate the Gladius. Across rearming, refuelling and repairing, you're probably in the hundreds of Alpha UEC, which is far less than what you'll make. It seems obvious, but with no cargo storage to speak of and no spare seat, the main game loop open to the Gladius is combat contracts. And that's something that feels very natural with the Gladius, able to handle a variety of different situations depending on your own pilot skill. In terms of loadout changes, there isn't much I would change from the base model. Perhaps in the current patch swapping out the Mantis for a Panther just to avoid the need to head back and reload ammunition. The rest of the components all do the job just fine for my tastes, although I do accept that somebody looking to min-max might make some further upgrades. The Gladius is a sleek, iconic fighter, and the in-game performance doesn't disappoint in that regard. It's easy to fly, well armed for its size, and does the job of going toe to toe against enemy fighters. Expected to feature heavily in the upcoming Squadron 42 campaign, it also benefits from lots of detail, such as the special startup animation of flicking the various switches in the cockpit. There are some minor frustrations, like the grubby fingerprints on the display screens, but mostly it's all good fun. The Gladius is available for 1.2 million Alpha UEC, or out of game for around $90. Whilst that's a lot of money to pay for a video game, for that money you do get a very capable fighter, so if you're somebody who would rather pay a bit more to skip the grind in game, the Gladius might be an interesting choice as your first ship. But the in-game price is very compelling, so as a step up from one of the other starter ships would make an excellent choice. But what do you think? Are you a fan of the Gladius? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you got this far to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you'll press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.